Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of how to create your own first person shooter single player game. In this episode we will get free gun shooting sounds and some screen shake when shooting. If you want to follow along with this series, check out the card that displays it at the top right for the playlist. Note that if this tutorial helps you out, then make sure to drop a like. If you want to learn even more regarding game development, then consider to subscribe. And just dropping any comment down below helps the channel out a lot. And join the Discord. I would love to hear more with what you guys are busy with. And back to the video. I found the free sound effects pack. The link is inside of the description. Make sure to open up your Unity Asset Store and add the package to your assets. When you have the project open, go to Package Manager and then search for Free Sound Effects Pack. Download the package and once you have it downloaded, import the package. Drag the imported package inside of the Imported Assets folder. Open up the gun script and create a new variable private audio source called gun sound. In the awake method, we will then give gun sound a value by saying gun sound equal get component and pass in the type audio source. Let us go back inside of Unity and add the audio source. Go inside of the free sounds effects pack we have imported and choose a gun sound of your liking and drag it in as a component on the gun prefab where the gun script is located. I will be using Handgun 2 as you need to press each time to shoot and it sounds very heavy. Make sure to untick Awake as we don't want the sound to play once the game starts. Head back into the gun script and in the shoot method we call above the Raycast hit GunSound.Play. When we press the shoot input button then the audio will play. Now that we got the sound working, just remember to go back inside of Unity and click on the player prefab inside of the hierarchy and click on overrides and apply all changes that was made. Head inside of the player prefab and select the player follow camera game object. It has the Cinemachine virtual camera component attached which is following the player camera route. If we look a bit down we will see that noise is set to basic multi-channel purlin. In the noise profile we will use the 6D shake noise and then make sure we adjust amplitude gain via the script to make the camera shake. Pivot offset at Z is 1 which I will set to 0 as I want the camera to be all zeroed out and then make sure amplitude gain is 0 for now and make the frequency gain 5. We can adjust the amplitude gain to 2 and play the game. You will then see how the camera shakes. Stop the game and now we create our Cinemachine Shake script. Go to the scripts folder and create a new C Sharp script called Cinemachine Shake and drag the script on our player follow camera inside of the player prefab. Open up the script and remove the start and update method. At the top we want to add using Cinemachine. We can then make a private Cinemachine virtual camera variable called Cinemachine virtual camera and another variable called private float shake timer which will handle the duration we want to shake the camera for. Create a private void wake function and inside we can create Cinemachine virtual camera equal get component Cinemachine virtual camera. This will get the component where this script is attached to. Create a new function called public void shake camera and pass in float intensity and float time. We will be able to call this function whenever we want the camera to shake and pass in the time we want it to shake and also adjust the intensity of what the shake should be. Inside the function we want to get the noise profile we set in the inspector on the camera so we will write Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin called Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin equals Cinemachine Virtual Camera dot get Cinemachine Component Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin. Now we can use the variable to adjust the amplitude gain so we will write Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin dot M underscore Amplitude Gain equal Intensity. Now that we can pass in the intensity of the shake, 
Now we want to also save the time which will be passed through inside of the shake timer by writing shake timer equal time. Above the shake camera method, create a private void update method. We then want to say if shake timer is greater than zero, then shake timer minus equals time dot delta time to tick off by seconds. If shake timer reaches less or equal than zero, then time over. We can then copy and paste the Shake Camera Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin and change the M Amplitude Gain to 0F. So the update method will check if our Shake Timer has a value greater than 0 and then subtract it from time.delta time with each tick and then when it reaches 0 or less then the time is over and the amplitude needs to go back to 0 and this will stop our shake. Before we leave the script, we want this script to be accessed easily in another script. So we make this a static instance by writing at the top public static machine and call it instance and say it is a get private set. Inside of the awake function above the machine virtual camera, we then write instance equal this to reference the script. Open the gun script and where we have the shoot method below the gun sound dot play, we then call machine shake dot instance dot shake camera and pass in 2F for the intensity and 1 for the time. If we play the game, we can see the intensity is too much and the time is too long. So let's head back into the gun script and adjust the intensity to 1F and the time to 0.25F. If we play the game now, we can see that it feels better and the camera shaking with each shot fired looks great. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, join the Discord channel if you want to learn more with game development and if you would just like to join the community or ask for any advice. I also have a Patreon page. If you want to show extra support, then that is the platform to support me on. Check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below as well as the full Git project. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.